session starts at eight to two. Um, so Princeton was going to host us, and then something fell through for them, and then Middletown was going to host us, and so then I was like, well, that makes sense. Yep. Um, Jeff, you want to I call this meeting of the Dakota Board of Education, Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022, to order. Mr. Zink, would you call the roll? Mr. D? Here. Ms. Bodie? Here. Ms. Casper? Here. Ms. Schaefer? Here. Ms. O'Connor? Here. Board move to number two to approve the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Thank you, Mr. D. Second? Mrs. Schaefer? Mr. Zink? Mr. D? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Bodie? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Board will move to number three on the agenda, the executive session motion. I'll take a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of consideration of the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Schaefer. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Casper. Mr. Zink? Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. Mr. Eddy? Yes. Ms. Bodie? Yes. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Board will move downstairs for executive session, and we will be back at the conclusion of executive session.
I had to get a new one. Black and red and blue. I got Joe's walking out there. Just turn off your microphone. I call the board back into session. The board met in executive session for the purpose of consideration of the investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee. Board, I'll move to board action number four on our agenda. And I'm going to enter a resolution and we'll be looking for a motion. Our Lakota community has been through a tremendous amount of turmoil during the last few years. In addition to all of the challenges of COVID-19 and its impact on our students, we've been addressing curriculum issues, developing and presenting the master facility plan to our stakeholders, and most recently responding to concerns regarding the superintendent, Matt Miller. After receiving the initial report from the Butler County Sheriff's Office, which consulted with the prosecutor's office and found no probable cause of wrongdoing, the board unanimously voted to hire an outside investigation team to provide our community with an additional level of assurance that all of the relevant facts have been discovered in an unbiased and lawful manner. The scope of this investigation included an in-depth forensic audit on all devices used by Superintendent Miller. We were informed recently that the results of the investigation and the forensic audit had been completed, and we've spent the past two hours hearing from the investigator. The investigator found no evidence indicating that Mr. Miller engaged in any act that violates law, district policy, or his contract. As a final precautionary step to confirm the results, the board and Mr. Miller have agreed to a fitness for duty evaluation that will take place very soon. The board's process has been very thorough. I think the board will acknowledge that even these best efforts will probably not be acceptable to some. However, we must move forward and focus our attention on prioritizing the education of Lakota students. Board, I'm looking for a motion to accept this. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Schaefer. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Casper. Is there discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Zink, please call the roll. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Ms. Casper? Yes. Mr. D? Yes. Ms. Bodie? No. Ms. O'Connor? Yes. Thank you, board. Madam President, if I may have the floor. Go ahead. Thank you. There has never been a need to authenticate, authentic, sorry, authenticate the documents that have already been authentic, often, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing that. Authentic, often, authentic, what is it? Authenticated. Authenticated, thank you so much. Okay, there has never been a need to often, Authenticated. Sorry, there has never been a need to authentic, authentic, 
Why am I having problems I don't know. with that? I don't know, sorry. Authenticate, there has never been a need to authenticate the documents that have already been authenticated. The police have confirmed that Matt Miller made public solicitations to have men sleep with his wife for his entertainment. This is something that not only put his wife in danger, but shows a total lack of concern for her physical and emotional well-being. These actions not only demonstrate his willingness to act on desires that for most people are at best grotesque, but require the solicitation of third parties that are complete strangers into what would normally be the most intimate aspects of a human relations. In addition, they confirmed that there was pillow talk of drugging, videoing, and molesting minors. These are not the character traits and rational, any rational person would look for in a superintendent of schools who is charged with the well-being of children. With this information fully in the public sphere and the police having confirmed their authenticity, it is unfathomable that Mr. Miller does not voluntarily resign. However, in the absence of that voluntary resignation, I move that Mr. Miller be put on leave and the board began the process necessary to, for removal. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion dies. We'll move to number five, public comment. As a reminder, our public participation guidelines that we follow as stated in the Lakota Local School District Board of Education Policy 0169.1. The board values public expression on educational issues. The board of Education also values and appreciates an efficient and orderly meeting. Therefore, public participation will be governed by the following rules as outlined in our policy. For our speakers, we ask that our speakers have registered their intent to speak. I have a list of those registered to speak tonight. When you come to the microphone, please state your name for the record. Each statement made by our participant is limited to three minutes. We'll have a timer on our screen up here. At the point that you see it go to yellow, please wrap up your comments so that when the screen goes to red, you are finished with your comments. We ask that you are seated then. Each statement must be directed to the presiding officer and no person may address or question board members individually. Please be mindful of the guidelines. If they're violated, there'll be a warning, and then we'll ask that you sit down and forfeit the rest of your time. Please be respectful. For our audience, as a reminder to those in the audience, we ask that you respectfully listen to all points of view at the microphone. Clapping, booing, and commenting on yourselves is distracting. It makes it very hard for our speakers to be heard by the board and it takes away from the time that's allotted for public comment within our meetings. If a lack of public decorum interferes with the orderly conduct of our meeting, I may call for a recess or an adjournment to another day. As I explained, we do want to hear from you. It is critical that there be public decorum on all sides to allow us to do so. I'll call names. And I'd ask that you line up across the uh, next to the wall so that we're ready to go. When one person's done, we'll have a couple of people in the uh, batter's box ready to come up. Rachel Zapirian will start. Sandy Wheatley will follow. Jennifer Richardson will be up next. You may start when you're ready, Mrs. Zapirian. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rachel Zapirian, and I am a mother of two, an aunt of two Lakota students as well. Thank you for taking the time to serve our schools and to listen to public comments tonight. I wanna to give a big shout out to Leah and the staff for their efforts to stuff the bus. I am so proud that our community was able to come together to feed folks. I'm also here very concerned that our, our community can't not seem to come together to feed the minds of our district students, the minds with knowledge, hope, love, and kindness. Instead, we're all caught up in a situation to choose sides when really most of us are in the middle and all of us tend to want the same thing, the best future for our kids and community. I'm here tonight with a call to action for our school board to be brave enough to serve our students, all of our students, despite the recent political pressures, the bullying and the unwanted fears that have infected both our nation and been brought to our local school board. I don't envy the position you are in, 
I believe many of you ran with great intentions and you have served our school in the past with your wisdom, love and fairness. And I see you all in survival mode now, dealing with poison, poison that's at work to destroy our public schools. I do pray for you all to have the strength to stand up for what's right for our students' future, be strong against the loud demand from those with self-righteous, selfish agendas. I'm also very concerned listening to Darby Bodie's speech at the Ohio State School Board meeting over the controversial LGBTQ plus resolution where she clearly dehumanized students with gender identities that differ from her own. Her words were in describing these children were abominations, evil. These are children she's sworn to serve. An abomination means a thing that causes disgust or hatred. These are her words about the children that are different than hers that she's here to serve. Dehumanization is the first step in genocide. As a mother, a US citizen and a God loving woman, I'm completely disgusted that she's chosen to target hate towards vulnerable kids instead of trying to protect them. How are these statements not civil rights violations? It's not patriotic to push discrimination. And trying to remove somebody's identity is like emotional and psychological genocide. You're not killing the person, but you're making them not belong. Not acknowledging true identities within our society is essentially removing a group from existence. Mrs. Sapirian, I need to ask you to wrap up. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Mrs. Wheatley? I, th I think Mrs. Wheatley has left. Jennifer Richardson is up next. She's also left. Mr. Horton is up. Mr. Argo follows. Mr. LaJoy and Mr. McColl. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, board, for letting us uh, give public comment tonight. Uh, a few meetings ago, I was scheduled to uh, give public comment when public comment was suspended. Um, and I'm grateful that we have this opportunity back to, to provide comment to the board. Um, I wanted to actually say the same thing that I was going to say that week. Um, and that was the week that in the personnel issues that were, or the personnel items uh, that were on the agenda, um, Mrs. Bug was, was noted as being retiring. Um, I think most, there's a lot of families in Lakota who are very familiar with the wonders that came out of Bugville over the years. Uh, schools, uh, I, I encountered Bugville for the first time with my children at Liberty uh, Early Childhood. I know she's at um, Creekside Early Childhood now. Um, and my children still talk about Buddy the Tree that's outside the window that was our classroom at Liberty. Uh, and I wanna talk uh, something that I learned from, I, I could praise Mrs. Bug as everyone can, everyone has their stories. But um, one of the things that I learned from Mrs. Bug through my children was when they came home and talked about that they learned about bucket fillers and bucket scoopers. And a lot of this is in the social emotional learning uh, curriculum that's not now in the, in the district. Um, but the idea of there are people who fill you with energy and learning and positivity, and there's people who scoop it away from you. And they were taught to be bucket fillers. And that's something that I've incorporated in my life. I use it at work with some of the more difficult uh, teammates that I have on my team. Um, but I also encourage the board and the members of the community, let's learn from Mrs. Bug. Let's all try to be bucket fillers and try to bring some positivity back to, to this district that we all know and love. Thanks so much. Mr. Argo. <clears throat> My name is Alex Argo. Uh, I wanted to start on a positive note. Um, so my life has been very hectic the past few weeks, uh, ever since my seven-year-old daughter had a very unfortunate accident uh, that resulted in a head injury uh, that required an emergency craniotomy and a week-long hospital stay. Um, I was scared out of my mind, and as, as my always smiling seven-year-old struggled to repeat simple words, and the right side of her face started having seizures as we rushed her into Liberty Children's ER. Now, I know I said this was going to be positive, but here goes. <laughs> Even though I never had found myself more helpless than I felt at that point, I don't think I could ever have asked for a better community to face this struggle in. 
we were rushed into the big room at Liberty Children's ER and subsequently airlifted down to the children's main campus, which houses the number five pediatric neurosurgery department in the country and the number three children's hospital in the country. They quickly decided to operate on my daughter and she has bounced back as well as one could ask, at least for having your skull opened, reinforced with a titanium plate and closed back up. After surgery, she started the journey back to her normal self. She's working on getting back to school full time, but it's not quite there yet. But I wanted to publicly put out a huge thank you to all of the kind words, cards, activities, craft kits, banners, and gifts that have come pouring in from all the Lakota community as our daughter recovered at home. It literally looked like Christmas morning with all of the stuff that came to our house. Get well cards from every single kid in her grade at Heritage gifts and craft kits and stuffed animals. I think the final count was in the 20s for stuffed animals alone. She got things from all the teachers in her grade, the office staff, support staff, her oldest siblings, principal and office staff and teachers, her previous teachers, her siblings, previous teachers. I will say Santa has some mighty big shoes to fill this year. The love that poured into this little girl when she was stuck in the hospital and stuck at home with half of her hair shaved off was just what the doctor ordered. I also uh, wanted to thank the board for continuing to allow us to make public comments. I think this is a very important part of the public process that I feel has been lacking since this new board took over. Even when Ms. Casper was president during the last organizational year and was constantly under attack, the board president always took the time to respond and redirect to the appropriate board member or administrator in most instances. This year, questions are repeatedly asked and not answered. I know that there have been multiple questions that I myself have asked and have not yet to receive answers to. I would implore the, the board to do better responding to their constituents. Allow direct criticism. criticism Mr. Argon, would you wrap up, please? Allow direct criticism of elected officials and consider actually responding to it rather than ignoring. I've heard at many meetings to put my email down and public comments would be responded to via email and an answer was not available during the actual meeting. Mr. Argo, your time is up. I, I do want to note that I did receive an email of support, though, from the superintendent when my daughter was in the hospital. Thank you. We're thankful that your daughter's going to be all right. Mr. LaJoy? And Mr. McCall will follow. Go ahead, sir. Hi, my name is Dominic LaJoy. I live at 9398 Ambleside Drive in Westchester. Um, I know the whole ward here went through a very exhaustive process. I mean, we spent two hours and we spent a couple hours waiting for you. And I just want to tell you, thank you. Um, I know you worked hard on this, but also I, I, I appreciate the fact that there was acknowledgement that the entire Lakota community has been exhausted by this, by this inquiry, inquisition. And I want to thank you for working hard at it and sticking with it until it was resolved. Thank you very much. Mr. McCall, you'll wrap us up. Benjamin McCall uh, lived in Liberty Township mm -hmm. roughly eight years and lived within Cincinnati 24. Uh, I'll always press, I think, it's important to have effective meetings. And when you have challenges that you're all facing from the community <laughs> and oftentimes at times from each other, uh, that can make it a little bit more difficult and a little bit more challenging. But it's important that even if there are challenges, even if you're around people that you disagree with, like many of us in our working lives, we have to work through it. Uh, we have to work through it, work with each other, and find the common alleys and collaboration to do that. And I think one thing that's been a challenge this year is there's a lot less, even through COVID, there's a lot less, there's a lot less collaboration than I've seen in the past. And I'd like to see that more. I think I started the very first conversation saying that I want the meetings to be effective, like I thought, think all of you are. And in order to be effective, we have to focus on the right things. And one of the right things is the master facilities plan. And I don't think it's gotten the attention that it should. Um, I don't think people talk about it as, as much as they should as they do all these other uh, side issues, which if people have concerns, I think it's important for people to address and bring those up. But when something's addressed, when investigations have been had, it's important when the closure is done to 
let it be closed, let it be buried and move forward versus trying to dig it up over and over again. So with the Lakota master plan, I also know that there's some um, individuals in the community and people that are leery about it. But my, my personal perspective is I get that you want to think through and go through, but in, we continue to have the conversation of chicken and the egg. And until you have a plan, you can't think about figuration, configurations. You can't think about what go into schools and you can't fix the problems that we have in the schools now. They're going to cost us a lot more. So I'm going to continue to also always bring up the Lakota master plan because I'm thinking not only of my kids over the next four to eight years, but I'm thinking about everybody's kids because we've all benefited from the decisions that were made 15, 20 years ago that created the system and the schools and the buildings that we have now that we benefit from. Um, another thing in closing, last month, October was National Principals Month. And uh, I don't know if anybody brought that up as much. I, I, I encourage everyone, if they think about a principal in the school, give them honor, send them a note, speak to that. And Sparks, or Spark, Spark, uh, the group that does uh, uh, the journalism within Lakota, uh, I encourage you to buy a $20 subscription to support that group. Uh, I think they do amazing work and they do a lot of good work. So thank you again. Have a good night. Thank you to our public speakers and to our audience for your decorum tonight. Appreciate that. We'll move to number five. I'm sorry, number six, which is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank Seven, you, Mrs. Eight. Schaefer. Thank you, Mr. Adeem. Mr. Zink. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mr. Adeem. Yes. Ms. Bodie. Yes. Ms. Casper. Yes. Ms. O'Connor. Yes. Thank you all for coming out this evening. We're adjourned.